Dipsy. Yes, you good? All is good. All is good, man. Um, you need no introduction to who is Dipsy. <laughs> Everybody knows Dipsy. You know, I've the young generation. The first name that they come across is Dipsy. Uh, there's so much history that is attached to your name. And how are you feeling about that? From oh, generation honored. to generation. Yeah, just honored. I mean, if you, you try your best to excel, you hope that your people recognize your efforts. You know, it's always a nice feeling when somebody recognizes me. Yeah. So you have had um, a successful career. You're one of the best footballers that we have had, uh, depending on which generation you are coming from. Uh, you know, but now that you have done that, maybe just to sum up, just give us a picture of your career, your highlights, your most precious moments of your career. Okay. I, I would like to say the first one would be qualifying for Africa. For a guy like me who had been with the national team for like 14 years, 12, 14 years, it's a lifetime. And finally get to play in an AFCON uh, tournament and get an opportunity to score the first goal. It's memorable. I mean, I played in the MLS. I believe I'm the first Motona to play in the MLS. I played in the Danish Super League. I think I'm still the only one who has played in the Danish Super League. Uh, and then I ended up playing in South Africa. I played for five clubs. You know, kept in the field. So I'd say it was a pretty decent career. Yeah. Hey, 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 Looking at the Afcon 2012, that is the, the highlight of this nation, the highest that you have ever reached as a as the Zebras. You know, um, how how did you put it, and what do you think made your team qualify and the experience the moment? Yeah. Firstly, I think we had a, a very good number of uh, professional players. Professional, I mean the guys playing outside Botswana. So they came with a different mentality. I know even the first game, uh, it was during the World Cup. I remember I met the team in, 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 our, in, our, uh, in the morning and I was joking about it. I was like, what's happening? Is they, are things still the same as the UTV? Yeah. Uh, they laughed about it. It was a light moment. Yeah. Like Jewel said, we're going to qualify. What makes you think this time will be different? He said, we have decided. <laughs> so that was a message that's very clear that uh, as much as the system can fail you as an individual, what are you willing to do and how much of yourself are you willing to invest to get to the level that you want? So having been with the team for more than a decade, it was the first time it was a real team. You know, everybody knew their role in the team and everybody gave 100%. Even if you weren't a starting player, you knew if your chance came, you have to give your best because the standard was, was very high. So it was good. All right. I, I remember, if I'm not mistaken, if the story is true, had the uh, Tok Tok wanted to quit the game at some point, God, the Pod Racing Room, Mungara Coach, um, those guys are cooking. <laughs> no, those stories, there's too many of them. I think maybe you're talking of the one particular one that I know of yeah. was uh, the other qualifiers when we were playing Egypt in Cairo. Yeah. I mean, that. That place is something else. <laughs> so the guy was just killing him the whole time. So, how did I go to the restroom? Yeah, hey, I guess you get as well. So you can imagine there are many duels like that. Yeah, yeah. Individual duels within the game. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning it was tough, but towards the end, uh, everybody stood his ground. You know, they said, you know what? When I leave this pitch, this guy will know who I am. Yeah. And that's the kind of attitude that you need as a footballer. You need to believe in yourself. You need to trust your teammate to do their part. You need to push each other. You must hold yourself at high standards. Yeah. You've qualified. You scored important goals. You assisted important goals in qualifying. You scored the important goal, uh, the first one at the AFCON. Um, what is your biggest highlight of the Africa Cup of Nations 2012? Your biggest highlight? The biggest highlight is achieving and being the first team to qualify and being uh, African team of the year. Yeah. You know, and mostly being the highest ranking in our football history ever. Yeah. It was around that time. So it was a combination of many things. You know, so I must say from a point, those are the ones that stick out, but 
every game for Zagros is an important game. I remember Vasco used to say, you know, you are you are playing for your family name, you are playing for your people, you are, you are playing for your country. So with that, it leaves you believing that you also want to leave a mark. You want your family name to be spoken about for the longest time and hopefully be never be never be forgotten. But you see it's up to the association and everybody else around football to document all of these things so that people know our history, people know what we have sacrificed. Little now when we came we found a foundation about three days later in the late Russian so there are all these blocks that's building the, the world, they are able to honor football fame. You know, and it's up to this generation to also make a, a name for themselves. I mean, they have TV now, yeah. you know, they are playing in Nigeria, they are playing uh, everywhere else. So it's an opportunity for them to also write their names in the history books of the front of the world. For, for the young generations that came a little bit late, um, they did not see the likes of Dumi, uh, Deika, you know, as one of the other guys that we told he was good. Uh, we know Dipsy. Uh, just for this moment, don't be Dipsy. Who is better between Dumi and Dipsy? Who is good at playing baller? We, we can never, <laughs> we can never compare generations. Yeah. Let's just be honest. If I'm the best player, maybe I'm the best player of my generation, generation. but he's also a best player of his generation. So it will always come to that. Uh, and then holistically we can look at other things, but we have to be very specific at what we are comparing. Yeah. You know, we play different roles with to me. He's a big role model of mine. I got a chance to play with him for Zebra you know, when, and I learned a lot from these guys. Now, I'm the type of guy who was copying what's good there, what's good there, what's good there, and made my own style. So I think uh, players of today have too many opportunities. Maybe they don't realize they have opportunities. We used to go to the matches to watch and learn from the other guys. Now they have TV, they have analysts, you know, so it's easy to, to study somebody else. It's, te it's easier to figure out what their habits are and all of that. Besides going to watch a match for 19 minutes, one they can give you a DVD and say, yeah, this is a highlight of the, uh, the previous game, five minutes. And those five minutes is my movements, my touches, my shots, my turns, everything. You can study that. Yeah. We come from a generation you have to do your own homework. You know, so yeah. it would be very unfair to compare us to other generations or compare me to other generations. If you think I'm, I'm the greatest, good for you, but that's life. What's important is to recognize everybody who has contributed to the game. Yeah.